What's up everyone? Welcome back to My Community Motors. So I'm finally getting around to big boring big booty tree. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, I've been really busy and kind of dragging my feet. So anyway, it's time to do that. Um, one thing, it's probably going to be a little filthy under here. Um, I didn't watch the bike yesterday, but we took, my wife and I took our C3s up to Glacier National Park last week and drove them all the way up going to the Sun Road and awesome experience. It was great. I'll even put a picture up here so you guys can see like one of the views or something like that. Um, but the last like, I think it was seven to eight miles was construction. It was all flat, but it was dirt road and they had just sprayed it with the water truck so there wouldn't be dust. And so I was covered in mud. Uh, so I'm sure under here, it's going to be pretty filthy still. So I'll be taking care of that while I'm doing all this. Um, and then yesterday, what I already had, went ahead and did is I went and took this thing for a test drive using my uh, draggy device and got top speed, um, eighth mile time, things like that. I'll go ahead and play that video right now. You guys can kind of see all the numbers and everything. So you can see the numbers from the initial test run. Um, one other thing to keep in mind is this engine isn't completely stopped for those numbers. Um, it does have that little intake that I built, the exhaust you can see there. Um, I also have the Melosi variator kit and the Beast Mode tuner in here that are part of this same kit for the big bore. It's just the actual big bore I've been slacking on. And then I also have a Rubino clutch in here. So it won't be a complete like stock to big bore comparison, but close-ish. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the parts and then we can start tearing this thing down. So the first box we have here, you can open it up and see, you got your rings and stuff. And then your cylinder with the, the pistons already in there, but it's just floating in there. And then in this guy, got all your gaskets and your uh, cylinder clips and your G clips, and then your head. So this is the, the new head. Yeah, so not a whole lot of parts. Uh, just, it replaces quite a bit. Okay, so now that you've seen the parts that we're gonna be putting on here, uh, it's time to get this motor off so we can actually do the work. Um, I am gonna kind of speed through getting this disassembled and getting the engine off here because I've shown that in the past. I believe in the stretch video, I show in detail how to get this engine off. If you wanna go back to that video, you can watch it. All right, so here we have the engine after I cleaned it. It's for the most part clean, there's still some spots I can clean up as I'm going. Um, but we're ready to start disassembling. So what I'm gonna start with, first off, take the throttle body and intake manifold off. And you just got a two Allen screws right here. Okay, and then the insulator and the O-ring. All right, so here we have the motor just turned 90 degrees, so you can see. Um, now we need to drain our coolant out. And the drain plug here on my radiator is stripped out because it's just a plastic Phillips head. Um, so we're just gonna pop the hose off here and drain it into this bowl here, collect it. Right. Pull the cap off too so I can breathe. <laughs> All right, now that we've got most of the coolant out, we can take the radiator off. That's just the one hose clamp, the screws here, and then there's some eight millimeters uh, back here holding the, the shroud on. The radiator got out of our way. There was four screws I didn't see one at first. So there's the four that was holding that on there. Um, right here is your thermostat housing. And so we need to pull this off um, and get our thermostat out. It's just two eight millimeter bolts. Put the bowl under there just in case. And there's your little thermostat. Okay, so now over on this side, we're ready to take off these two hoses. And this one's already disconnected on the other side from the radiator. All right, so we got the hoses off, that cleaned out. Um, next, we can move on to the valve cover. Um, 
You don't have to remove the coil, uh, just the end from the spark plug here. And we just got four eight millimeters. Okay, and then now we are ready to take off our water pump. And this one has three eight millimeter bolts. There's two in the front here and then one right there <laughs> in the back. So we'll take those off. Now one thing to note is that there are different length screws. So the long one goes back here and the two shorter ones go up here and they all three have a copper washer on them. So make sure you don't lose those or if they're damaged or really messed up, then make sure to replace them. Okay, and then this should wiggle off. Oh, also, don't forget this gasket here. Well, I wanted to show you guys in here on your little cam gear. So you see that little line right there? That's our reference point here on the front cover. There's this line here. So what we're gonna do is match up the line on the cam gear to the line here by rotating the flywheel. Right like that. And then that puts us at top dead center. There is also a mark over here on the flywheel. I took a picture so I don't have to flip the motor around and I'll put it up here on the screen. Um, that you can verify so you got the three spots or these two you line up and then on the flywheel. But now we're ready to take our chain tensioner off. It's just two eight millimeters. All right, so now we're ready to take out our cam gear. And so what we're gonna do, this is why we need the CVT cover off so I can hold on to the variator here. And then I'm gonna fish this 12 millimeter in there and get it around there. Gross. Try to do that without losing chunks of yourself. And once that's loose, you should be able to kind of take it out by your finger. And once you get the nut out, you can try to fish your chain off the cam gear. And then pull it out. So now we are ready to pull this head off. And to do that, you have these four 10 millimeter here. And we're going to take them off in a star pattern. And then we have two more bolts which are eight millimeters, right here, right here. Okay, and now we should be able to pop this head off. Very carefully. Make sure to pay attention to the dowel pins too. And then set that aside, we will be transferring stuff from this to the new one. Okay, and then we can take off this head gasket. Right, and then once you have that off, you can pull your lower Time your chain guide out, set that aside, we'll be reusing that as well. And now we are ready to pull the cylinder off. Make sure to hang on to your timing chain so that it doesn't slide in. <laughs> we don't want that to happen. Again, pay attention to the dowel pins. We're ready to get this piston out of here. One thing that I like to do is put like a paper towel in the piston hole here and then also even in there. Just keep anything from going down into the engine, especially like one of these clips. You don't want this to pop off and go flying in there, so. This will probably go flying across the room, but you just kind of get your pick in there. Yep, and hit the wall over there. <laughs> All right, so with that out of the way, push your first pin out. Okay, I'm done with that. Out comes your piston. So now before we can get the new piston in there, we have to put the rings on it. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, luckily they're pre-gapped, they just need to be installed and oriented correctly. So let's do that. All right, we're now ready to put our piston rings on our piston. Um, so what I've done here to try to help illustrate the way that these have to go on is on the piston, see right here, there's a little arrow. And so that's gonna go here, and then I've drawn on the paper towel here, you can see that I've got the orientation of that. Next, we have our three oil rings, and you can see the opening for this one is down here. This is the expansion ring. And then these two rings here go, this one will go below this one, 
and this one will go above it. And again, you can see where I have the gaps laid out. Then once I get those all in, into that third groove, the other two grooves just take these two piston rings and then you can see the orientation that I've marked for them as well. So first we'll take this guy here and again, take the opening and put it opposite of the arrow. So you put it in the slot and carefully work it around. Make sure you don't scratch out the side of the piston. And then we'll take this one and like I said, it goes underneath that oil ring. Okay, so that one's in there. And then it's oh, gap about here, as you can see. And we got the expansion ring, or the arrow here, expansion ring here, and then the first oil ring here. Now we'll put this one on with the opening up here. There we go, that one went in smoothly. And then you have the gaps here. So facing the or arrow of the right orientation, our gaps right there. Now, this one, the opening is opposite of that one. So 180 out. And then it goes in the middle groove. Again, try not to scratch the piston itself and also don't like overstretch your rings. Okay, make sure my orientation's right. Arrow up, opening here. And then the last piston ring, as you see, will go in this top slot with its opening going that way. There we go. And then these ones you can pretty easily move now line them up. Alright, so now I can just kind of go through my little pattern here, check each ring, and make sure it's gaps where it's at, and then as long as everything looks good, we're ready to throw this thing back on the engine. Okay, so we're now ready to take our new piston and put it on the engine. And here real quick you can actually see a little size comparison. <laughs> Quite a bit bigger. So this kit comes with, luckily, G-clips, which are these little guys, and they go into the side of the piston here. So I need to go ahead and put one in now, and then the new wrist, or and then I can put this on, slide the wrist pin in, and get the other one in. And these kind of just go in with a twist. Okay, so I took a little finagling, but I got her. <laughs> And then one thing you want to do too on these G-clips, if you guys can see, right now the opening is right here in the opening of the piston part, but you want to twist it to where the opening is opposite of the, the hole. Okay, so we are now ready to put our piston on the crank. So we got a new wrist pin that comes with it, and I did go ahead and I put some motor oil on it just to give it some lube, and then put a little bit on the piston here. So what you're going to do is slide this down over the crank, slide your wrist pin in until you get on the crank. Make sure you're not getting this paper towel. And then just push it all the way in. All right, so now we got to get that other G-clip or whatever you want to call these things in. So you're going to grab it like so. There we go. I'm going to make sure it's fully seated. And one thing is if you can twist it fairly easily, it should be seated. Because if it's not seated, then it's going to try to bind. And then again, put your gap opposite of the gap in the piston here. All right, so it's now time to put on the new cylinder. Um, but before we do that, you can see we still have this hose on the old cylinder. And so it's just easier to get to now than once the, the cylinder's on. So I'm gonna swap that over. And then I'm gonna also spray this off with some carb cleaner. Cause a lot of times they'll put uh, like a coating on them just to prevent corrosion while they're shipping and stuff and in storage. So you just wanna get that stuff off of there. So I'm gonna go hit that with some carb cleaner and I'm gonna move this tube over here and then 
You can see too that it's slightly off from the face of here. So just try to match that on your, your new cylinder. Okay, so now that we got the piston on there, we're ready to start getting our cylinder back on there so we can pull out these rags and then put on our base gasket. Get your piston and your timing chain through, all that fun stuff. Okay, and then also our dowel pins. That if they weren't left in your block, they're in your cylinder, so, or should be in your cylinder, so make sure to grab them. That will also help line up your gasket. Just take a little bit of motor oil, and loop up the inside of the cylinder. Same with the piston, make sure it's nice and lubed up. Okay, so we're gonna line up the four head bolts into the cylinder. And then now's a good time to double check your ring end gaps. Make sure they're where they're supposed to be. But they can move while you're trying to do this, so pay attention. But now you're just going to try to wiggle the piston in here while kind of trying to compress the piston rings a little bit with your fingers. And then just kind of wiggle it in there. Not a ton of force. Like I'm just kind of rocking back and forth. Right. Now don't forget to get your chain through here. Can you slide this back? And then you can crank the engine clockwise from over here. Try to get it to go through there and be hanging on to your timing chain. There you can start to see the piston is coming forward now into the cylinder. And then you can you walk in the cylinder on. And then she's seated. Okay, so now before we can put the new head on, we have to take this stuff from the old head and put them over here. And as you can see, I've already done all the exterior stuff, um, which is just the, the thermostat, housing bolts. Um, I had to move my uh, coolant temperature sensor over because I have one of Matt's older kits. Um, his new kits come with this already pre-installed. Um, if you got a kit that does not have this pre-installed, contact Matt at Rolling Ranch. He told me to let you guys know because there's a potential, there's a batch that the threading was wrong here. So before you try to put this in there, contact him and he can let you know what you have to check and everything like that. So um, other than that though, we've got this 10 millimeter here, which I don't know if that might be like a drain for the coolant system of some sort. Um, it's got a little copper washer, so you want to remove that over too. And then you have your exhaust studs. And these are pretty easy to take off. And what you have to do is pretty much just take one of the nuts off of one put it on the other one and then lock them together with some wrenches. And then you can, <clears throat> excuse me, then use the, the tightened together nuts to back out the stud. So yeah, it's all been moved over and now I'm just ready to do the internals. So I'm going to try to get you a bit, little, little bit better like top shots. You can kind of see in here a bit better and then we'll get all that stuff moved over. Okay, so now we are ready to start taking the internals up here uh, off the stock head to get ready to go on the new head. So first off, and this is the easy step, take this little plate off. And what this does is it keeps these uh, little shafts that the, the rocker right on. It keeps them inside, or it keeps, it keeps them locked in position. So then once you get that off of there, um, since I have these spacers, I can't really just grab that shaft. So I'm gonna take my pick and go on the inside here, just to give it a little bit of tension so I can grab it. And as you can see, it's slowly sliding out. And now I'll switch to my fingers. All right, I got one spacer out. Okay, and then the shaft comes out. So right here with this one, and then you can pull your rocker out. And don't get these mixed up. <laughs> 
don't want to try to assemble this backwards. Alright, and then now this one. Okay, and then your intake rocker comes out. Again, setting these in the same orientation so that you don't lose stuff or put it back in the wrong spot. Okay, so now the next thing to come out of here is the camshaft. Which you can just push it over if it's tight in there. On the end cap here where the cam gear was at, you can put a bolt in and pull it. Alright. And now last but not least is our shims here for the, the valves. Okay, it wasn't the magnet I was hoping to find, but I did find uh, one of my welding magnets. Um, I don't know where my little handheld extendable magnet's at, but um, what you need to do is take these little shims out. You can see there's one here on the exhaust side. To the exhaust side. And then you can see it here, maybe, in the night. And they are marked with a number that's their thickness. Oh, trying to run away. And so make sure to put them back. Like you can see here, I have my exhaust roller rocker, and I got the shim with it. Now I'm gonna do the same thing with pulling these two out and make sure that they stay with the intake side stuff. And I'm gonna even set them in the same orientation so I know which way they go in. Ta-da! All right, so we're done with this head. And now it's time to just install all that stuff into the other one. All right, so I got the shims put back in the same place that they were before. Um, so now we're gonna take the camshaft and put that in, but before I do that, because this is a brand new head, I'm going to move it up with a little bit of oil. Especially where all the bearings ride and all that fun stuff. I'm just using some motor oil to uh, get some lube. And of course that shim fell out. Okay. And then this cam has some oil on it from being in the last engine. And you see the lobes here? We're going to go with lobe side down. All right, so now that we have our camshaft in there, we're ready to put our roller rockers back in. So we're going to start with our exhaust one. So first is the rocker, and you can see it lines up here with the shim on the valve, and then our spacer. All right, now the same thing on the intake. Dowling, except for it's opposite where the spacer goes on first. And then the roller rocker. Just like so. And then now, this top plate. There we go. And then that lines up with your four Headstead holes. All right, so we are now ready to put this thing on the engine. All right, now before we can put the head on, we have to do two things. First off, we have to put our lower timing chain tensioner, or not, not tensioner, excuse me, guide in here. It goes on the bottom. You can see there's the two little indentations here behind that tube. <laughs> and this has to go in before the head gasket, just like that. And then, like I just said, the head gasket now goes on. And you can look, it's almost symmetrical, so be careful. If you look here, there's a little bump out here and it matches the bottom of the cylinder. I don't know if you can, you can kind of see it right here. And now we're ready to slide our head on. And don't forget your little dowels. So I'm gonna put them in here real quick. And that also helps center the head gasket where it needs to be. So now we're gonna slide this on and I just have to feed the timing chain through. And for my pick like that to hold the chain. And then put the wheeler on slowly and surely until it fully seats. And now we're ready to put the 
cap nuts back on the head studs. Okay, now we got those on there just by hand. But when you torque them down, remember to do it in a cross pattern. We have to put in these two bolts real quick too on the side. Now we are ready to start setting the timing. Um, we should still be at top dead center. Double check and make sure that you still, still are. Um, our cam, we put it to the top dead center, like I said, with the lobes facing down. And the cam gear itself actually has like a little recess here that notches into the cam so it can't go off. So what I gotta do is feed this back in here and get the timing chain on it to where when it's on the cam, this line and that line match up. So I'm gonna do this in hyperlapse or off screen real quick because it might take me a minute. Okay, so after fiddling with this for a while, I finally got the, the cam gear in the right spot on the chain and hooked up to the cam. And as you can see, kind of, you can see on the cam gear right there, there's a, the line and there's also the line here. And then just verify that your top dead center on the flywheel is still accurate. Otherwise, your timing is gonna be completely off. All right, we're now ready to put the cam chain tensioner in. And what we have to do before we can though, is as you can see it won't push in, but you can release the tab and then it's just gonna push right back out because there's a spring. So take the 10 out of the back of the tensioner, or 10 millimeter, and you see the bolt has a big spring on it. And that's what keeps pushing this out. So now push the release and now we'll stay. So don't forget your gasket, make sure that's still there and present. And I'll put this back in. Right, place first. Okay, so now we have it mounted. We can now then take the screw with the spring and slide it in. And if you listen carefully, you'll probably hear the, the plunger extend out. It's gonna sound like a zip tie. Right there. And then tighten that down. Oh, loosen it. All right, so like I said, you can, you can turn your engine manually by hand slowly and make sure you don't have any, no collisions, no binding, no nothing. And then the, after you excuse me, cycle it a few times, make sure that these lines here and here and also on the flywheel still all match up. Um, if you do, then you should be good to go for your timing and we're ready for reassembly. So I'm not gonna film most of it because it's just the reverse of what we did to disassemble it. Uh, a couple things to keep note on though is on your water pump here. There's the three bolts and two of them are short and one's long. These two that, that are towards the top of the head, those are the short ones and this is the long one. And then another thing you can kind of see here in the, the bolt for the cam, there's a slot in it like for like a big screwdriver almost is what it looks like. Your water pump has a little slot or a little knob thingy that that needs to slide into the screw and that's what actually drives your water pump. All right, there's the engine all back together. Um, so one thing I'm gonna do before I put it back on the bike too, just because it's gonna be easier now, is topping off our coolant. So if you look here, this is where your thermostat was. There's a little eight millimeter bolt on top. And that is your air bleed or purge, whatever you wanna call it. So you just take that bolt out and just have a co copper crush washer, so don't lose that. And now you just start slowly filling the radiator. And then as it's coming up, the air actually has somewhere to go. And so once coolant starts coming out of this with a steady stream and like no more bubbles, then you put the bolt back in, top this off, and then you should be good to go. You'll still want to double check it, you know, once you run it for a bit, but should be close-ish. And again, like I said, do it slowly, otherwise that hole will become a fountain. All right, see, we got some water or coolant and air coming out of there now. I'm gonna keep going. So I get more of a steady stream. So now I'll pull the bolt back in. Okay, that's tight. I'll now clean up my mess that I made, uh, get the radiator closed back up, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put this back on the bike, again off camera because it's the opposite, or reverse of what we've already done, and then we'll try our first startup. Okay, the bike is back together. Uh, completely, I went ahead and put all the pa body panels on and everything. Um, and then normally what you need to do now is the, the tuning for your engine on the Bespoke tuner to compensate for the big bore kit. Uh, I'm not gonna really cover tuning because Rolling Ranch already has a, a video on how to use the Bespoke tuner to set up your tuning. And I'll put a link up here uh, and then also down in the description too. 
Uh, but what I am going to give you is what I got from my friend Jeff. It's just a bass tune, so just the basic numbers to put in just to get your bike going. And then you can sit there and tweak them from, from there. So I went ahead and I did do that tune and everything in here, so I am ready to go. So let's see if this thing starts up. So as you can see, she's running. Uh, the tunes at least got it going good uh, for now. So now what I can do is get this thing off the lift. Um, go run around, do a little bit of that, just kind of driving around slowly, kind of uh, wearing the engine a bit, warm it up, stuff like that. And then uh, after a little while, I will uh, go do film another uh, quarter mile or whatever it was that I did with the draggy, just to kind of compare the numbers. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this off the lift and then we'll get to some numbers. Alright, so yeah, as you can see from that video, um, we've already got some pretty good gains. So that the top speed was 39 miles an hour on the before video and 47 on the after, so already an eight mile an hour gain. And then I believe that the half mile was like seven seconds faster, so acceleration's even better. Um, and that's again with the base tune. Uh, I need to tweak it a bit better to really dial this thing in, and actually I have something to do that. I'm gonna, in the future, install a wideband O2 sensor bone in here and the ruckus, and I have a gauge and sensor and everything. That way I can tune them to perfection. And everything, everyone should be happy. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's the, the big board kit installed, not too hard, uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, I will put a link in the description for the parts if you guys want to pick this thing up. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and sign off and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Catch you later.